Welcome back to Ligar, everyone. I'm Tyler. I got a great video. I'm going to be using our sample kits and I'm going to show you some different techniques using our white epoxy. If you guys haven't tried our epoxy or are new to the resin industry, make sure you order one below and you guys can experience the difference when working with unique and quality products. So you ordered a sample kit. I'm gonna show you what's in your sample kit box. This is for uh, a white sample kit. So when you get your box, it's gonna look kind of like this. You're gonna have your, your part A, four ounces, says white on it. Then you're gonna have a part B that says white that's two ounces. So it's two to one. So we have four ounces, half of that is two ounces. These are the white. So these are basically for our base coat. And then you're gonna have your highlights and they're gonna be two ounces of part A, one ounce of part B. And then when you guys get these, they'll actually say highlights underneath the part B and part A. That way you don't get confused. Um, you just wanna make sure you're not adding one of these with one of, you know, the big one, four ounces uh, and like a one ounce of part B. It's not gonna get hard. So just make sure you separate these. So what I like to do after I take it out, I know these are for my highlights. So I'm gonna set these off to the side and then I'm not gonna get these mixed up. So I know this is what I'm using for my base coat. You'll also have two tongue depressors and then your highlight color. So that's basically what comes in a kit. Um, it's always good to kind of just pre-separate these out. That way we know we're not gonna get mixed up. Okay, so I'm gonna go over mixing. We're gonna mix our base coat first. So again, we wanna make sure we separate out our base coat and our highlights. So these are our white base coat. These are our highlights. So I'm gonna take these off the table because we're not mixing them now. I don't wanna get accidentally grab one of those and mix into here and it not get hard. So now we also don't need our metallics because those go in our highlights and then the stir stick. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take off the part A lid of the white, the part B, two ounces, and then we're gonna dump it in to the white. We wanna scrape this out, get as much out as we can. And then we're just gonna mix this for about a minute, minute and a half. And while we're mixing it, we wanna scrape the sides, make sure we get that, that part B hardener mixed into all the edges of the part A that's on the side. We wanna scrape the bottom and do the same thing. Get down on those corners a little bit. I like to scrape the sides a couple times as I'm mixing just to make sure also the bottom. Okay, so that's basically ready. So what you wanna do before you guys even mix, you wanna make sure your boards are level uh, both ways, right? Left to right, up and down, horizontal, vertical, however you wanna do it. But you wanna make sure these boards are nice and level that way when you're done with your design, it's not gonna flow off and look all crazy. So we've already leveled all these boards. The other thing you wanna make sure you've cleaned them, wiped them good, right? We don't want any debris on them because we're, we're not priming these. The counter kits and floor kits come with primer. The epoxy sample kits don't just because they're sample kits, right? So we're gonna pour out our base coat of white on the whole board. And as long as you scraped your sides good, right? Mixed it really good, you can scrape it all out. So we can get all that out of there. Then we're just gonna take a cheap chip brush. The chip brushes don't come with the kits, so you'll have to get a brush. Um, we don't like to use a roller because the, the rollers will soak up a lot of the epoxy and then your boards will be a lot thinner. So we're just gonna kind of brush this all around the board, trying to get an even coat everywhere. Try not to run a bunch off the board. I want to keep as much on the top here as we can. And 
then I like to paint my edges. When you're doing white, it usually soaks into the board really good, so you might have to paint them like twice, maybe even three times, if you want them to look good. And you'll see what I mean. It'll kind of just soak right into there. Looks good now, but after a couple minutes, it kind of absorbs all of it. Okay, so base coat's down, now we're ready to mix our highlights. We got our highlights here, so we're gonna, again, open the part A, and then the part B, and we're gonna add the part B into the part A. And then we wanna scrape, as, again, as much out as we can. All right, so now we wanna mix this up. And if you guys have some smaller plastic cups, you can just pour them both into that, because um, it is kinda at the top here, but really simple to mix so you want to scrape the sides again get down in the corners there scrape the bottom so I like to mix like 30 seconds then we'll add the, the powder And then starting out, just go a little slow. This is really fine powder. It'll just splash out of the cup here if you try to mix it quick. But you can see it mixes in really, really easy. So now our highlights are ready. So we're gonna be showing you guys a wood grain technique on this. It's really simple. And then we're also gonna incorporate some chrome uh, metallic spray paint. Any spray paint works, Rust-Oleum, uh, anything from Walmart, Home Depot, or Lowe's, any kind of spray paint will work just fine. Just keep in mind the chrome does dry quick. So when you're spraying it, you kind of want to blend it quick or it'll kind of crust over, which can give you another cool look. But um, just keep that in mind that the, the, the metallics do dry a lot quicker. So we're going to take our highlight here and we're just going to run some beads kind of throughout the counter here. Again, not hitting everywhere. And notice I'm not using all, I'm not using all my highlights. I can always add more. I can't take it away and and I don't want a lot of black in here so now we'll take our spray paint and we're gonna spray the chrome in between the other spots the more random you are with this the cooler it's gonna look well it's good to start out with less and then we can always add more so you can you can do this technique with the trial uh, pool trial just a, like a spatula, all kinds of stuff. The easiest, fastest way is use your hands and it's really fun. So I'm just going up and down really quick. And notice I'm pulling off the boards as I get to the end. That'll give us more of a natural look. Like this was cut out of a slab of granite or something. So now we're just kind of blending it more and more like right here. It just looks like kind of like I sprayed it out. So I just want to kind of blend those in just a little more. That's looking really good. So like I said, the less, less you do, we can always add to it. So I want to add a little black right in here. So now I'm going to take my black and just run a small vein there. Maybe we want, maybe you wanted to spray a little more chrome somewhere, you could spray that now too. And then you would just go through and blend that black in. So really, really simple technique. Looks amazing every time. And you can do any colors with this. Um, you can do any spray paint color. We just chose to do the chrome. Yeah, it looks really, really awesome. 
So the other, the other thing we can do is spritz it with clear isopropyl 91% or higher. Um, it will create some cells in the spray paint and stuff. So if you want that more, uh, not as powerful or as big effects, you would just leave it like this and let it dry out. So spraying the isopropyl is gonna give you some more effects in it. And I'll spray half of this board. We'll leave a little, so we'll leave this half down here untouched so you guys can kind of see the difference. But notice how it really creates some cells where all that metallic spray paint is. Really cool effect, um, but also just leaving it plain like it is there, really awesome also. All right, so when you're doing the dispersing effects, right, with the isopropyl, sometimes you'll get what we call fish eyes where the epoxy, where it's thin, it will separate out and go all the way down to the board and you can actually see the board or primer. Um, so we'll just pretend like we had a fish eye here, right, where I could see the board. All you would do is just kind of pat around that area with your finger and a glove and fill it in, right? If you had one over here, you would do the same thing. You just wanna pat it in until that fills in and you'll never know where you did that, but you don't wanna leave that because the isopropyl disperses the surface and kind of pushes it away and that's what creates this effect. And if you have thin spots, it can kind of push it away to the board or the primer um, and you'll wanna fill those in before you guys leave the board to dry. Okay, so I've already showed you guys how to mix. So I already have my, my base coat mixed up here. So we're gonna just show you some different techniques. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pour this out on the board. We're gonna take our chip brush and we're just gonna basically paint this epoxy on the whole board. Again, we don't like to use rollers because they just soak up a lot of that resin and then you wind up having less product for your board. So I'm just kind of working it around, taking the thick spots and moving it to thinner spots. And obviously you can hit your edges. I showed you over here, I painted my edge, but see how it soaked in, like I said? So we'd have to hit that again. So I'm not gonna paint this edge. We'll just show you the techniques, but if you wanted to have these edges look good, you would just paint it twice. Okay, so there's our base coat. So now you would mix up your highlights. So I already have mine mixed up, ready to go. And so on this technique, we're gonna, really simple, we're gonna be using a Bondo squeegee. You can really use any type of squeegee. And we're just gonna kind of push the product away in random spots throughout the uh, sample board here. We wanna make sure we get some on our edges in the middle. Just kind of open up some of these spots on the board here. And then we're gonna take our coffee here and we're gonna pour in all these spots that we kinda opened up. And again, you don't have to use all your highlights. If you're going for a less of a dramatic look or uh, you don't use all your highlights, you'll have more of the white show we, we still didn't use all of ours. There's a little left in there. But be having a white base and using a dark highlight color, you don't wanna to add too much. So now we're gonna use the same squeegee and we're just gonna kinda of blend this together all randomly. And notice I'm not really moving the product, I'm just kinda of skipping across the surface. The whole objective here is to blend the, the puddles just enough to where they don't look like blobs that we poured out. 
and you'll see we'll get some gray hues in this because we're mixing brown with white. Again, we just want to get it to where you can't really tell we just poured puddles out. And that's pretty much it. So now, again, you can leave it like this and let it marbleize out. Or we can take our isopropyl spray and give it a really dramatic effect with the cells and uh, the dispersing. So we're just gonna, again, spritz the surface with it. And again, I'll only spray a quarter of it so you guys can see what it does without spraying it. And remember, when you're doing the, the dispersing effect, sometimes you'll get fish eyes that go down to the board. You'll just pat those in with your finger and it'll help level them out. But you can see all the webbing and cells that it creates from doing that spray versus over here. Still a really nice look without the spray and that'll look even better in about 10, 15 minutes. All right, so I'm gonna show you another technique. We're gonna do two different looks on this one just so we can show you some of the options that you can do. Um, I've already got my base coat mixed up, so we're gonna pour this out. And the board's not dirty, it's just stained from people walking on this. Don't ask me why they were walking on our sample boards, but it happens sometimes. So same thing, we're gonna just spread it out. Okay, so on this one, we're gonna do a really subtle vein technique. And, and we're basically gonna use hardly any of our highlights. So this is a really simple technique and it looks awesome every time. So we're gonna, again, just drizzle some really small veins. Onto the top here. Notice how I'm trying to make all mine go different directions. That's basically it. Again, you can add more, but to do this technique, the smaller veins you can do, the better. Um, you can use a paint paintbrush to kind of blend these in. I like the effect that the squeegee gives us because it doesn't blend it in as much. And we're just gonna kind of, just kind of follow these veins a little, right? We don't want to go right across them, but we kind of want to just blend them in. So I'm kind of following them a little bit. And I wanna, I wanna kind of hit everywhere on the board. That way everything's got a little hue of that silver or it's kind of been agitated a little bit. And that's basically it. So if you wanted to see a lot more veins, you would just add some more product kind of in the same spots, blend it again. But this is kind of perfect. It's nice and subtle. So that's kind of one look that you can do. Again, any colors you can do these with. I mean, you can see how much highlight I have left. I have quite a bit. So since I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you uh, another effect with spray paint on this half. So I'll just show you how I would add more highlights before I do that. So again, I'm gonna add the same spots, kind of the same exact vein areas I'm adding more to. And I'm adding quite a bit here, so you'll see the difference. Notice my veins are a lot bigger. And 
and you can see it adds a lot more color out there. Really, really beautiful, but you can see the two different looks from adding subtle amounts versus adding a lot more. Okay, so spray paint, we're gonna just kind of miss the surface and then we're gonna immediately spray the clear isopropyl on it. So we're gonna just, again, miss the surface and then we're gonna spritz it. kind of see the effects that it gives really really cool so that's just a fine mist and then spritzing it right away and by doing that you can kind of see those veins look like they're deep in the counter really really cool look and then obviously I got a little you know I oversprayed a little much but you can kind of see the beginning there without without the dispersing Thanks for watching the video guys, it was super fun. Hope you guys learned a lot here. Remember, if you haven't tried epoxy or you never used our resin, make sure you order a kit. They're really cost effective and you'll see the difference in working with a quality resin. So, after you guys are done with your project, send us pics, tell us what you think. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Again, thanks again, make sure you subscribe, comment below. We're out of here.